Hello and welcome to the Apostolic Teachings Podcast. This episode is a part of the media ministry of the Honorable Bishop Paul A. Weatherly. This episode was recorded during one of our Bible studies that take place on Sunday mornings, Thursday nights, and our Young People's Tuesday night Bible class. Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the message. Your children will be dedicated. But I promise you, if you don't come to church, most of the time they won't either. They're like sponges. Have anybody got children? They're like sponges. But you have them. And they were sponges. They seen you, listened to you, heard you, followed you, and act like you. I know some of us don't want like, no, they ain't nothing like me. I don't know. Take you back to that age. There may be a different story to tell. But we have to make sure that they have an opportunity. Today in this lesson, uh, does anybody know where we're at today? We are on opportunities for life. Opportunities for life. And that's on page 56. Did everybody, where she doesn't have one, somebody getting, I asked those to be passed out. Can you grab one? Come back there. I want to make sure everybody's got a lesson book. It helps when you have one. That way, Sister Weatherly has a lot of this on there, don't you? You don't have those on there yet? Okay. Okay. All right. She'll be putting the scriptures. She'll be putting the scriptures up. So the focus thought says what? Where are y'all at? Everybody fall asleep on me? Believers what? Man. Now that is a statement. Believers should be sensitive to the direction of the Spirit. That is a big S. What's the difference in a small S and a big S? And don't, I'm not talking grammatically. <laughs> the large S is the direction that it it is refers to as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. The big S. A small S in Scripture denotes the spirit of man or some other spirit. Some lesser spirit. Uh, so we have to be sensitive. If you're a believer, we have to be sensitive to the direction of the spirit. The Bible says, try the spirits to see if they be of me. Be if they're of God. So what you have to understand is that everybody is not sensitive, even if they have the Holy Ghost. Some people claim the Holy Ghost, but never follow what it says do. And a lot of times we want to say that person just doesn't care. When reality is, they just may not be sensitive to what the Spirit is saying. Let me throw it on me. Okay? The rest of that says, as opportunity may only knock once. So I was riding with my uh, daughter, uh, my oldest daughter, then some years ago. We were heading down Sheridan to 21st Street, going somewhere, I don't remember now. But as we were coming up towards the light, there was an old car and this woman that looked like Methuselah's wife or maybe mother. Anybody know who Methuselah was? Oldest man. The oldest man that ever lived on the earth. He lived 969 years old. So this woman was old, not being just, I'm not trying to pick at her, but she was old and she was bent over. And she was standing in front of the car with the hood open. 
And I could see there was a gentleman in the car sitting there and he looked like he was as old or older than her. And he didn't get out, so I figured he must not have been had the ability to do so very easily. And the Lord spoke to me when I got up just before that burger came there. The Lord said, go help them. And I went, instead of turning, I went through the light. And the voice said, go help them a second time. And I said, okay, the third time, go help them. And I turned in past McDonald's, went up around by old Casa Bonita, and headed back out to go behind them. In just that little bit of time, maybe a minute or so, by the time I got back around, there was three big burly bikers that looked apart. And they were there assisting that old lady. And the Lord spoke to me just like I'm speaking, He's talking to you. He said, they have your blessing. That opportunity knocked, and I didn't answer. And God had a blessing for me. But I missed my blessing because I wasn't sensitive. If I had been sensitive or obedient to it, I would have pulled around the corner. I had plenty of time. But I thought, oh, that's just me. It's inconvenient. I'm on my way somewhere. I'm just being real. Y'all might be super saints. I know you would have just turned in right there and followed the voice of the Lord. Can I tell a story? Yes, ma'am. So, um, this happened in 2007. My dad thought he was having a heart attack. So, I took him to St. Francis Hospital. In the meantime, my 17-year-old, my 15-year-old, and my 20-year-old went to a bar downtown. And my 17 year old got shot in the head. So St. John's had called me and told me that my son got shot in the head. And I cannot tell you still to this day how I got from St. Francis to St. John's. And like I said, it's the grace of God. He took the will from me. He got me there. I don't know how it happened. When we, when we have an opportunity to do something that God has spoken to us, we're supposed to seize that moment. Different people in this church have different gifts. But if we deny doing what God has called us to do, it may be your blessing, right? But let me tell you something. What about the other side? God speaks to you to help somebody do something, pray for somebody. He directs you for a specific assignment and you don't do it. Yeah, you miss out, but what about the other people that you just robbed? You robbed them of the help that you had the ability to do. Sometimes it's just laying on the hands. And we think, well... I'm going to pick on Sister Puckett there. She didn't consider herself anything but just a, a thankful child of God to be in the church. And the Lord spoke to me and said, have Sister Carolyn come up and pray. And if they want their blessings, she is the one to pray. And I'm going to use her to bless them. And so I Come on, sister, come up here. And she come up here for prayer. I said, no, 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 no. You're going to pray for people. And she said, well, she was like, oh. I don't know. She told me what she said. I don't remember exactly. But she was thinking, what? I don't know how to pray for people. 
She got, she had not been in that office of praying over somebody. But that day, she said, okay. And then God began to tell her what to pray and how to pray when each person came. And the place, you, Sister Williams, do you remember? It was a powerful, powerful service. Why? Because we were sensitive to what the Spirit said to do. And when we're sensitive, God comes down and sanctions it by a mighty move of the Holy Ghost. So those are just some things that I'm, I'm trying to get us to understand that we have to be sensitive in this day and hour for the opportunities for our life. This focus verse says what? I know thy works, but... Uh huh. All right. Has kept my word and has to not denied my name. Now, let me just hit this real quick. I know thy works. This is one of the churches. There were seven churches that God spoke to. And he said, I know your works. See, God knows you wherever you are the good, the bad, and the ugly. The successes, the failures, the victories, the battles. He knows it. He knows what, there ain't nothing hidden. The Bible says that everything is open and naked before the eyes of the Lord. You're not covering nothing up. He knows all things, whether it's good or bad. And he says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. You have the ability to walk through that door. Why? And no man can shut it. When God gives you an opportunity, nobody can stop it. Nobody but you. You can cut off every blessing you got. You can cut off all of the victories. You can cut off your finance, everything, by just not walking through the door. But it takes you going through the door. The door is a representation of another realm, another level, another place. I'm leaving this old stuff and I'm moving into a new. It's the representation that he's telling you, hey, it doesn't matter what happened back here. I'm leaving that place. I'm stepping into something else. So, no man can shut it. Alright? For thou hast little strength he was telling them, look, I know this is difficult. I know you've been in struggles. I know that you've had battles. But in the midst of your battles and even your failures. Anybody fail? You, you, don't, you don't have to. You don't, I'll put my hand up for you. We've had a lot of failures. But that's not what he's talking about. He said, you still have a little thing, a little strength, right? And has kept what? In the midst of your trouble, you still believe God. You still trusted Him. You still had confidence. He's going to bring on the other side. And has kept my word and has not denied my name. You can fail over and over. You can fail today. Tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. What stops you is when you deny the name. What changes your trajectory is by denying the name. What name? Do we anybody got a red letter Bible? Uh, that's yeah. that's all the red letters. Yes. Is those in red letters? So, this is Jesus. Y'all got red letter Bibles, you'll see it. This is Jesus saying, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. 
when we can start getting an understanding that Jesus is God. Anybody have a hard time understanding that? I mean, I'm just being honest. Anybody that kind of is like, I'm not real sure about that. Hey. You said it's kind of. I said, eh, not really. Because if you don't understand the basics, it's hard to get deeper in, into the Word because those are some basic things we have to understand. When we understand that God, the Bible says, uh, let's, let's go to John 1 and 1. I, I want to just hit this. I know this ain't part of the lesson, but it is right now because it, it came up. John 1 and 1. If you've got a Bible, you can sister whether they'll be putting it up here on the screen as well. What's that say, everybody? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word oh, was let's God. slow down now. We're going to read together. We don't need anybody running off. This is not Evan and Woodhead's sped red course. Some of you older folks will understand that reference. You, you remember that reference is? Okay. I knew it's Sister Kelly. Uh, Sister, uh, no, I'm gonna say Sister Kelly, but I'm gonna try to change that. And say my last name. Sister oh, Lynn sure. will understand that reference because me and her are around the same time period. Yeah. We'll have to let you in on that later. Uh, this isn't the speed reading course. <laughs> so when we read in here, let's read together. Ready? In the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word what? Was God. So the Word. The Word. Okay? The Word was with God and the Word was God. Alright? What's verse 14? Pull it down, Sister Weatherly. To verse 14. I'm trying to give you some clarity. What's it say? And the Word, or wait a minute, let me just stop. Or God, because the Word was with God, the Word was God. Uh -huh. So, and the Word, or and God was what? Made flesh. Made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as what? The glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yeah. That's just one. We have lots of scriptures, but this is probably one of the simplest ones. To show the people that are having a hard time that God was made flesh. He came out of heaven because in Isaiah says he looked around and there was no Savior. Now, we know that's what he came for, was to be a Savior. And to sacrifice himself. Because up until then, animal sacrifices were used to kind of roll away your sins for the year. Because every year they had to come back. And Jesus was like, I'm, I'm done with this. Decades and decades and decades of animal sacrifice did not remove your sin. They don't have the ability. Their blood is not pure. It was only a satisfier for the moment. And then he came in and said, now I'm going to give the perfect sacrifice. Myself. Mm -hmm. There was no sin in him. He wasn't born like an animal. He wasn't born like the rest of us humans. He wasn't created. Because when he was born, he was not born with a man seed. Because his father was not like Joseph. Joseph, his natural father, was born in sin. The Bible says, born in sin, shaped in iniquity. So everybody from Adam on was born in sin. Adam was born perfect. But he sinned against God and he took on the damnetic nature of sin and it was introduced in every seed after him. It was like a plague. Adam had it and every other descendant from Adam had it too. 
So anything that's born of a seed takes characteristics of it. How many times have you ever planted a watermelon and it came out a tomato? How about you planted an apple tree and you produced pears? You produce what your seed is. A seed from an apple will produce a seed for an apple. If you are born in sin, that's your seed. When you produce something, it's got sin in it from day one. But the Bible says that the Holy Ghost overshadowed Mary. I'm trying not to get too graphic, but you understand that? Covered her. Impregnated her. But the Holy Ghost is God. The Bible says God is a spirit. And the Holy Ghost is the spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is what causes the actions to happen. In the beginning, God spoke. Said, let there be light. Said, let there be. He said, he began to move. The Spirit moved on the water. What's the Spirit? God. His action of the Holy Ghost began to move on the water. The face of the deep. So when we understand that. Go ahead. And that's where when you read this right here, it talks about the word. Mm -hmm. If you go in the Greek logo, the logos goes and, back to Genesis. I'm and, trying to get there. And, and also, a lot of people don't realize this. He was also connecting this with the uh, uh, with the scripture in um, Proverbs, where it deals with wisdom. Mm -hmm. And the w word here, wisdom, are also connected in, in, in the Greek sense, mm -hmm. where it's talking about you know this is this is not just another person. Because wisdom was also personified. Right. And we know that wisdom is just trying to. They, they, when when you read it, it's, it's the intellect of right, God. The intellect of God. And so here, the word or the intellect of God is, is being put out into action. Here. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, does that make sense, there, everybody? So God spoke His. In the beginning was the word, and then He's saying the Greek it says the logos, meaning the spoken word of God. That's what started creation. Is the spoken word. And that word begin to creep all the way down through. Every creation is made by wisdom. And that wisdom comes from God. Because God is wisdom. God is perfection. You have none of that. You have no perfection, no wisdom without God. So here, we understand that God became flesh and became that living sacrifice that was holy and was not like regular man. That's why he had to come. He said, I looked around. God speaking to uh, Isaiah. He said, I looked around for a savior and I couldn't find him. But by my own right arm, what's the right arm? His authority. If the king puts out the scepter to you, you're accepted. If he puts out the left side, they're going to kill you, drag you out. We have to understand all of these things together. And start fitting them together that makes sense. But when you can't put them together, then you come up with Trinity. A man made, trying to, a man made uh, explanation of something that is spiritual. It's a carnal explanation that tries to define a spiritual God. And it falls short. There is nowhere in the Bible, nowhere where it says there's three persons. But the Bible does say that all the fullness of the Godhead is bodily in him, in Jesus. What was the Godhead? The Father, him being Father in creation, the Son in redemption, the Holy Ghost, the justification. But people can't get that because they need a carnal way to split things up to try to understand something that's not carnal. It's spiritual. And the Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against the spirit. So, in this, we have to stand, understand who God is. Now, in Revelations, going back there, he makes it pretty clear 
that he is speaking in Revelations. And when he says that he is, as long as you haven't denied his name, his name, the Bible says that there's salvation in no other but the name of Jesus. There is no salvation. He says in another place, the book of Acts, I believe, says that in everything that you do in word or deed. So if you pray, it's, he said, do all in the name of Jesus. So if I pray, it needs to be in Jesus' name. Yep. If I baptize somebody, it's in Jesus' name. Yep. Everything I do in word or deed has to be done all in the name of Jesus. Yep. So that's, that's a freebie here. <laughs> now let's move on to our text here. Acts 2 and 17 and 21. What's it say? Or it says, well, it's getting, let me read the first one while she's getting it. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith who? God. Saith God. I will what? Pour out. Pour out of my spirit. That's the big S. Another one, God's scripture. You understand that? Anybody understand that? How am I getting that? Can you explain it to me? And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out, pour out of my spirit. my spirit. It's mine. God has his own spirit, which we call the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm going to pour it out upon what? Oh, oh, Anybody receive the Holy Ghost in here? <laughs> you receive the spirit of the living God. And he poured it out upon you. And in you. And you began to speak in other tongues. If you have not spoken other tongues, you do not have the Holy Ghost according to the scripture. That's what the Bible says. Don't get mad at me. Well, I ain't spoken tongues. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with the Bible. Because the Bible says, what's the old song say? The Bible's right and everybody else is wrong. You don't know what the old ones. Huh? I said people don't know those old songs. We used to sing it back in the day. The Bible is right. Everybody's wrong. Well, yeah. all right. So, he said, I'm going to pour out of my spirit, the big S, Holy Ghost, upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Prophesy and your young men shall what? See visions and your old men shall what? Where'd that come from? Now, who wrote this? Luke's writing. Peter's preaching. There it is. They didn't come up with this on their own. They got it from the book of Joel. They were reading or preaching what was already preached. Anything I ever preach, if it's not out of the Bible, it ain't going to count. And what they preached was only what they read in the Bible. It wasn't it was scriptures in. It wasn't, it wasn't collected up in the Bible like we have it now. But they did have the writings. They had the manuscripts, the scrolls that they would print and reprint with their hands. They didn't have print presses. They had inscribed painstakingly. Right, right. If you miss one letter, if you made the letter look wonky, you had to scrap the whole thing and do it over. And I'm talking about hundreds and hundreds of letters, thousands and thousands of letters. That's how important it was. And not anybody, everybody could be a scribe. Not anybody, everybody can be a preacher. Well, what does preacher mean? Speak forth. Speak forth. That's what preaching is. Speaking forth. All right. What's it say next? 
And on my servants and my handmaids, what? I will pour out in those days, what? Of my spirit. I'm going to put my spirit on people and cause them to prophesy. And, and I will show wonders in heaven above. And what? Earth beneath. And what? Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Now, see, people don't understand what this is talking about here. What's this talking about here? Verse 20. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord. What is that talking about? Anybody know? Scared of them? Is it twins? That's what it's saying. But what does it mean? We know it's the blood moon, the thing we, what we call the blood moon eclipse and all that. But, but what does it mean? Before the notable day of the Lord. What does that tell us? When the Lord comes back, there is going to be a fury. Why is the sun going to be turned into darkness? Anybody? Know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? Does anybody know anything about Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Huh? Yeah. Huh? The atomic bomb covered the sky and caused it to be dark. When the Bible talks about him raining down brimstone and fire in that last day, that some people call it the day of Armageddon, all these things, the sky will be dark. There will be so much fire, so much smoke that is going to cause the sun to be hidden. That's what it's talking about. Turned into darkness. And the moon what? Into blood. It's talking about a series of events that's getting ready to happen before that notable day of the Lord, which is the coming of the Lord. And what? It shall come what? That whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Does that mean that's all you got to do? Huh? No. Well, this in particular, this is talking about at that time. This is talking about. Yes, sir. At that so day. Here, he's, he's not talking about salvation right now because he's about to get into what salvation is for us. But that he is directly talking about in those last days. In those last days. When Armageddon and the, and the seven Somebody is going to argue with you. Some theologians are going to take and pick an argument with you and say that they can't be saved unless they're baptized in Jesus' name filled the Holy Ghost. But I'm going to tell you this. The one that was on the cross next to him and he told him, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Did he get baptized in Jesus' name? No. You know why? Yeah, the huh? He didn't die. No, not because he didn't die. I mean, because he died. That ain't it. Anybody else? Well, Jesus had been crucified and received up. All right. His name hadn't been revealed yet. It wasn't until Peter started preaching on the day of Pentecost and made the opportunity for you to be baptized in Jesus' name. Up until then, when people were baptized and Jesus himself was baptized, how was he baptized? All right. What was John's baptism? Unto repentance. Saying, Y'all don't know? All right. Better look it up. Look it up. So my words, all you theologians. But Jesus was baptized. Baptized under repentance. Nobody knows the rest. Come on, theologians. Come on, you theologians. Let's go, let's go here. Find it. If 
find it, let's find it, let's find it. We've got a few minutes. Baptism of Jesus. Who baptized Jesus? John. John. Uh-huh. John was baptizing everybody under repentance. I'm trying to flip through my pages here. If you find it first, just start out. need my other Bible, but I've got this in here that I use while I'm teaching Sunday school, so it takes me a little bit more. Um, anybody found it yet, quick? Uh, Matthew 3 and 15. Well, that's, I was just uh, heading in that direction, but I... Uh, That's not uh, that's not where we're at, where we need, but that is the baptism of Jesus. He was arguing with him. Said he didn't want to be baptized of him. He said, I don't I don't want to baptize you. But he said, John forbade him saying, I need to be baptized of thee. You come to me, you come out of me. He says, Suffer to be so, for thus it become us to fulfill all righteousness and he suffered him. I'm trying to find uh, I believe he said the kingdom of God was coming. Uh, the Holy Ghost. Anybody else find it in the other gospels? Having a hard time. I don't have my. I need my good Bible. What about Hebrews six? What's it say? Hebrews six and what? One, 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 two. What's it say? That talks about it, but that's not that's not where I want to go. Yeah. I, I don't think I don't think Mark one and nine is it, but I'll look. Uh, it's it, it actually says it uh, specifically. Because in John chapter three verse, or sorry, Matthew chapter three verse one says, "In those days came John the Baptist preaching the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand.'" That's it. That's it. Say it again. In those days. In those days. Came John the Baptist. Came John the Baptist preaching in Judea, the wilderness of Judea, saying, "Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." And then, that's what he was saying that's what he was preaching that's what he was teaching that's what he told the uh, Levites and the law the lawyers and all those that were coming he called a bunch of vipers a bunch of snakes he said who's warned you so that's you're talking earlier about how people would argue about the, the thief on the cross uh -huh. and that's where people don't understand the dispensations and where God works and how God works. And so throughout time, there's different, during, because of how he's setting things up, at one point it was the sacrifices. That was getting people ready. Right. But then here he's saying, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. This is that hand? This new dispensation, if you will, this new time right. is about to happen. So what was the dispensation before this? One? The law. The law. And the law gave a prescribed remedy for your, or remedy of or or payment, I should say, for your sin. It wasn't the remedy, but the payment to kind of hold it off. 
uh, that was the law. Then here comes John, and he's in a different, uh, he's preparing them for grace and mercy, and he's telling them to repent. Why? Because until Jesus goes to the cross, the name has not been revealed yet. Jesus, being God, has the ability to move out of a dispensation, do something, and move back in. Now, the law, let me give you a for instance, the law states that he could not be around a Samaritan. He couldn't touch her, couldn't speak to her, had zero to do with her under the law. But Jesus is the law writer. He's the one that gave the law. So he goes to the woman at the well. He steps out of the law and talks to her and converses with her through the law, I mean, through the, through the dispensation of grace. Does that make sense to you? Y'all know this story? He went up and talked to her and told her who she was. Told her you had five husbands and the one you're with now in terms. And when God can go and show mercy on this woman, that's what he did. He had no right by talking to her according to the law. But he's not governed by the law. Just like the thief on the cross. He's not governed by the law saying, I can't take you where I want you. Just like that scripture that says, where he says, this day you shall be with me in paradise. He has the right to pull somebody. Now, the calling on the name of the Lord, which Minister Reddy was talking about, if God decides that you're going to go by calling on his name, He's God. He can do what he wants to do. But we're not there yet. So we were prescribed in Acts 2.38. Can you get that for me, Sister Brother? This is what our prescription is. Every time, every period has a medicine, has a prescription, has a way of getting through. So what's it say? This is our prescription now. Then Peter said to them, what? Repent. 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 What's repenting do? Turning away from your sins. And godly sorrow. Being sorrowful for your sins. Godly sorrow. Not I got caught sorrow. There's a difference. A lot of people say, I'm sorry. Yeah, because you got caught. If you wouldn't have got caught, you'd have kept doing it. That ain't real godly sorrow. He said, bring me meat for repentance. I want some tears. I want some flow of your soul that you are honestly sorry of the things you've done up until now. And then when you repent and you're baptized in Jesus' name, is that what it says? Yep. A couple of you all. are the ones that want to. No, all. What? What's it say? Oh, 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 so there's not a position you can take nope. because you don't really agree. Nope, nope, nope. Or you don't like. Nope. What's, so this is pretty nope. emphatic. Every one of you. Yep. In this title's Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Nope, 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 nope. Well, isn't that the same thing? That's nope. what they always say. It's the same nope. thing. He was very clear in the name. Yep. Father is not a name. Nope. It's a title. I'm a father. Son is not a name. Nope. I am my mother's son. She had me. We didn't have the homosexual stuff going on where a man produced me. We don't, we don't believe men have babies. I'm a son. And I've got the Holy Ghost. But that's not my name. If you want my name, you have to call Paul or Bishop Weatherly, something to that effect. Pastor, Pastor that's a title. That ain't a name. What I'm saying is, is that he said everyone be baptized in the name, singular. Yep. And even if you thought Father and Son and Holy Ghost were names, if you thought that, 
He said, one singular name. Which one do you pick? Mm -hmm. He said, so we must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for yeah. what? The remission of our sins. The removal, the taking away of our sins. If you got baptized in Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, dipped down in, sprinkled on, whatever it is that your mode of baptism was, if it wasn't like this, all you did was got wet. Yeah. And your sins are still on you. You're still carrying it. Things you did 50 years ago, still on you. Things you did a week ago, still on you. It isn't until you have them washed away in baptismal waters. Court of Scripture. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, and we know that this is the correct way because earlier we were talking about verse 21, where he's talking about in the future. Verse 21 of what? Of Acts. Chapter Sister Weather, 21 of Acts. So there he's again refusing. You could just went back up. Uh, Acts 2, 21? Acts 2 and 21. I'm sorry, I thought I had to come back. That's all right. That's all right. So here he's talking about in those last days. Uh-huh. It shall come to pass and whosoever. So here he's describing the future, and then if you go down to verse 37, that's when they say, so then what do we do? How do we get saved? Right, right. It's, it's Absolutely like, right. heard this, they were pricked in the heart and right. said unto Peter and the rest of what, what, are, we what do? must we do? Well, what are we supposed to do? Right. And so here, he's been prescribing for us, for this, for right. this. Right, absolutely this right. Absolutely right. He's prescribing what we have to do. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're not there yet. He's right. talking about futuristic things right. that are coming. And a lot of people think that's all you got to do. Right? So anybody ever heard somebody say, well, all you do is just confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and you shall be saved? So what do we do? Do we get our exacto knife out again and cut the page where it says Jesus says he that believeth and is baptized shall shall many will be not now shall be because there was more to it than just the baptism and that was coming. He shall why? You shall be saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's what he said. But then if you go back to uh, if you go back to John 3 and 3 and 3 and 5, he said, unless a man is born of water, that's the baptism, yep. and of spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He can't enter the kingdom of God unless he has both of those applications. Baptized of the water and of the spirit. We call it baptism. A spiritual baptism right. is when you receive the Holy Ghost. Historically, that idea that just calling on his name will save us is only about 200 years old. Right, right. That's it's introduced uh, by the 17, thank you. Some, 17, uh, mid 1700s. That, that right, that they started good. using that. So, you know why? So the it's the same as if he's saying in 1700s, they start using that phrase, just call, and it's called the Lord your personal Savior, and you'll be saved. But there was another thing that happened like that too. In uh, about 200 uh, AD, uh, and moved into 300 uh, in the Church of Nicaea, where they changed things. They changed the mode of baptism. See, they keep wanting to change things because there were a lot of people that didn't want that. Uh, they would rather have somebody come and sprinkle them than them be immersed in water. It was a uh, derogatory look for them, but they were. Better than that, they didn't want to be like everybody else and do like these other folks. But up until the Council of Nicaea, everybody was baptized in Jesus' name in immersion, down in the water. That's why Paul says that we're buried with Him right. in baptism. Right. See, we have to do the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's that's what He came. He lived, died, born again, rose again. The Bible says, Paul says, we're supposed to die with him in the water, yep. buried with him in the water, and rise to the news of life. We go in an old, dirty, dead sinner and come out a new life. He said, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are. Are is present tense. All things are become new. That moment. 
You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You know what? You've ever heard somebody say, you're cleaner than a baby, a newborn baby? Yep. Mm -hmm. You're beyond a newborn baby. Yes, because babies are born in sin. And right. So when you get baptized, you're cleaner than a baby. Yep. Because now you have a brand new start. That all of your sins, all of your mistakes, all that is buried with you in the baptism of water. You come out to the newness of life. You are God's brand new perfect soul. You don't carry any more sin. And it's never, the Bible says never to be abroad against you again. Now the devil going to try because he's an accuser. The Bible says he's an accuser of the brother David. Since the land, he's going to be like, you remember, yeah, you got baptized in Jesus' name, got filled with the Holy Ghost, and the next day the devil's like, yeah, but you remember when you did this dirty stuff? But that's because the Bible says he's an accuser of the brother David. He's constantly accusing you of what no good you are. And you know why? You ever had somebody jealous of you? Yep. Yep. And they attack you? And they want to tell everybody how no good you are? They want to tell you how you ain't no good? Because they're jealous of you. That's why I told my kids, when people attack you in school, they're jealous of you. They're not secure in themselves. And the devil knows he ain't never got a chance to do. Look, he was in heaven. He was in heaven where we're looking to go. The only difference is we get a chance and he don't. He has no redemptive power. No redemptive ability. He can never go to heaven. He's been cast out. You ever heard something when you were, I'll take my jack and my balls and I'm going home. Anybody ever play jacks? Y'all you know jacks on? Y'all know jacks on? I do. When I, used to, I used to play when I was a kid, man, I was good. Mm -hmm. I'd get about eight or nine before I got in trouble. We'll do that around the world thing too. Yep. But you ever heard somebody get mad? I'm just taking mine and going home. That's, that's the devil. He's going to take whatever he can and go home. Because he can't stand that you have an opportunity yep. to be saved. So he's trying to come to kill, steal, and destroy everything that's in his path. And most of the time when we start coming to a church and start living for God, we're in his path. Because we are going to fight against everything he's trying to do evil. We have to make a decision. We have to make a decision. You say, well, I'm just not sure I want to make a decision. You have to make a decision. You're either going to accept the Lord and accept this plan of salvation and take the opportunities for your life or you're going to reject them. Yep. And when you reject them. See, what did we start with in Revelation? What did we start with? He said, and has not denied my name. When you reject being baptized in Jesus' name, you reject the idea or the opportunity to be filled with the Holy Ghost, you're denying that name. Anybody ever heard taking the name of the Lord in vain? Yes. Now don't don't say it, but anybody got any examples that they can tenderly yes. Yes. say what you would how you figure it would be? Come on, get brave. What do you consider taking the name of the Lord in vain? Oh my name. Some say G D. Some say Jesus Christ in a negative way. How about just simply being stoned? Or just saying it in an angry way. A lot of people are related to cursing. But let me open up your eyes today. That has nothing to do with it. I don't care how many times you violently say, Oh, Jesus Christ. Or for you. But that's not it. That's not taking the Lord's name in vain. Anybody know what it is? Mocking his name. I want you to get this. You might miss everything I said today. Don't, don't miss this. The way you take the Lord's name in vain 
is when you go down and you're baptized in Jesus' name and then you go back out and live the way you were living. You're not going to change your life and live for God. You're going to take on His name and go back out the same stuff you were involved in. That's taking the Lord's name in vain. The words He can forgive. You turning your back on Him and what did it say? Denying the name. When you go and live other than the way God's prescribed here, you're taking his name in vain. Does that mean that I can't be saved? No, I didn't say that. But you need to understand what taking on the name of the Lord is. And we take on his name through baptism. We're adopted that day. We went down as minister Jimmy Weatherly and came back out Jesus Weatherly if I can say it that way. Because he's taken on. He's become his father. Up until then, I was his father. But when he got baptized, that became an adoption, the Bible says. We're adopted by the Lord. And that's when we take on that name. All right. I didn't cut out my teaching time. But I did take out your, cut out your, your break time. Glad everybody's made it to the house of the Lord. Thank you again for joining us and tuning in to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to hear more lessons like these, you can find us at Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ on Facebook. We're located at 614 North Franklin Avenue, Sand Springs, Oklahoma, if you would like to attend service. God bless.